Two and a half years ago, a number of black and Asian homosexuals in London got together to form the Gay Black Group. It's the only one in the country and was set up to meet some very specific needs. These are just a few of its members and they have regular meetings here in this bookshop. One thing that I find all gay organisations have in common, they offer lots of different kinds of services, be it telephone, befriending or social. But the one thing they have in common is a lack of gay black empathy. There's no black people on the other end of the telephone. They profess to be non-sexist, they profess to be non-racist, but they can't really understand how we feel. This group does. What have been the benefits of joining this group? Um, when I first came out, I found a white organisation. Um, and there was this initial spark that I could actually identify with gay people. But when I went along to the meetings and talked to them about my family, about coming out, they all said they understood, but, I mean, they didn't. Um, and there were no other black people there. Um, what they actually said was that it was important for me to come out to my family and they're pushing the ideas of gay liberation. What I did was follow that up and I came out to my family. It was disastrous because I got thrown out from home because of the way that I'd come out to them. I came out in a very, uh, I suppose, identifying in a white middle class way. And um, my family couldn't cope with that and things just got really bad and I had to leave. I've approached my family since and talked to them more specifically in Asian terms about homosexuality, um, saying to them that we're basically trying to get back to them and trying to express what I feel um, through my culture as best as I can while still trying to live um, a gay life. Well, I've been with the group now for about five months and since I've been coming with the group, they've given me a lot of moral support. Before I came to the group, I used to go on to, to the, uh, as we call it, the scene. And when I went on the scene, like gay clubs and pubs, uh, I used to go a lot on my own. And um, the people I used to meet uh, were split into sort of two categories, white people. One sort of person just wants you for, for sex and the other sort don't want to know you at all. So when you're on the scene, a black man is on the scene, it's a very lonely life. I agree with a lot of li what Leon's saying about being black on the scene because I mean, once you walk for a disco in a gay club, you're just objectified as a fetish or an exotic kind of subject and um, there's no space really for your own personality. You're just kind of objectified to an extreme where people just just come up to you and kind of like say, well, you know, I feel like a bit of rough trade or I feel like, you know, I feel like being dirty, you know, and there's all those kind of myths surrounded like around you. Well, it's possible that when you're on the scene for you to forget that you're black because you tend, in, in a way, to be very easily assimilated in the white gay scene. Ahmed comes from Hyderabad in southern India. His family's been here for 14 years, and although they're Muslims, they're not particularly religious. He has an older brother and three sisters. He's currently completing his postgraduate studies. I knew that I was attracted to people of the same sex ever since I was at school. I never thought it was anything unusual. You know, it just, it was always very natural to me. When I left school and went to sixth form college, um, I had sort of problems with my studies and some problems with my family. And when it came to making new friends, a lot of the people around me were interested in the opposite sex, which I wasn't. And I suppose I reached some sort of crisis point, uh, which made me realise that um, I was gay. Why did you decide to tell your family? Well, actually, I didn't actually intend to tell them. My mother came across a letter from a gay youth group that I was organising. And she saw the word homosexual, and she asked me what it meant and what it was all about. And I actually couldn't explain to her what homosexual meant because there was no word in Urdu which is exactly equivalent to homosexual. So I said to her that I'd rather explain in front of my father because I could explain it in English rather than in Urdu. I think he was a bit taken aback. I mean, I think no one who's brought up 
in the same generation my father, how liberal they might be, can just, you know, just take it just like that. But he wasn't hostile. He seemed to sort of understand. And that feeling communicated itself to my mother. And I think, although she is sorry that I'm not getting married and producing children and all that, uh, she realised that I'm very happy the way I am, the life I lead. And she says, well, that's the most important thing, that I should be happy. Why are there so few women in the group? I think there's two answers for that question. The first is, of course, that um, a lot of women prefer to meet autonomously. They prefer to work with women, for women. And secondly, specifically to black women, I think it's a lot more difficult for uh, women from ethnic minorities to come out. Uh, their role within the family um, is a lot quieter, a lot more submissive, and it's a lot more difficult to actually establish your own identity as a woman, let alone um, to uh, then say, oh, well, I'm a lesbian as well. And it's a lot harder for them to actually find a role that they want to identify with. There are no public black female figures that are gay. What do you identify with? This group member was born here, but spent part of her childhood in Nigeria. She has a Nigerian father and an English mother. She works as a freelance journalist and translator. When did I realize I was gay? Well, I didn't exactly realize. I mean, I just sort of always was. Um, I began to realize, uh, certainly by my teens, um, I realized that uh, to be homosexual is very unpopular in the world at large. Um, again, this puzzled me because I didn't see what it had to do with anybody else at all. And all my life I continued having relationships with both men and women, but I always knew that I was supposed to keep the ones I had with women quiet. Did you have any problems with your family? Well, my mother's now dead. She died three years ago. Um, I feel that she might have been, or she probably would have been upset. Uh, but I think she would have come to terms with it. My father is much more difficult to think about. When I was still living at home, and I was about 16, somebody mentioned some man who was gay, you see. And my father said something to the effect of, oh, I wouldn't have one of those people in the house, not with this young boy here. Um, as though my, my brother would have been in mortal danger of sort of being molested um, had a gay man come into the house. I mean, I know that the, the subject's thoroughly distasteful to him. Now, since my mother is dead, um, I wouldn't dream of telling my father because I think it would be far too great a shock for him. How does being a gay black woman affect you in your everyday life? Well, in one sense it doesn't because I don't suppose there's a person on this street who knows that I'm gay. I prefer to live alone. I need a certain amount of peace and time to myself. Um, and I shall probably stay that way for a long time. Um, society tends to think of gay people as, be, as having um, simultaneously a very jolly and very miserable existence. Because on the one hand, you're expected to be footloose and fancy free without families. You can go out all night partying or, or, or what have you without having to feed children or sort of do the dishes or something. Uh, but on the other, on the other hand, um, it's also supposed that you have no real companions, that, um, that your love affairs will be unsatisfactory and that you will have no real sort of partners or support in life. Whereas there are people, I and mean, of course there are gay people who have long-standing relationships, who live with people, you know, which could be almost, you know, tantamount to a marriage. Uh, and there are individuals, um, but I mean, it's not perfect. A lot of gay people do have difficulty simply because of the pressures that have been exerted on them by heterosexual society, which says that homosexuality is abnormal and you mustn't be happy doing it. Well, you know, it's like I'm doing something here at home. It's only my business. Why should somebody who lives two miles away really care about it? You know? I first came out when I was 16, um, but I hadn't actually accepted my gayness. Um, I always thought it as um, a phase I was going through. And it wasn't until I started attending this group, listening to other Asian people and other black people um, talk about their own experiences and finding the support from them 
um, that I actually, you know, I've accepted myself that I am gay. Although his family originates from India, this member came here from Kenya in his early teens. He comes from a strict Hindu background and is the eldest son of a family of four children. He's a trainee accountant. My father died a few years ago and since then um, my family look upon me as the head of the family. Any sort of major decisions that have to be made, um, it all comes down to me. And it was very much, my family's a very close, uh, a very close family. And having to make all these decisions and having to look after the family um, made it very difficult for me to actually come out to my family and to tell them that I'm, you know, I'm gay. Do you think you'll ever be able to do that? Uh, not at the moment, not for at least five or six years, um, because my sister is at a marriageable age now, so we're looking for a prospective husband for her. And I feel that if I came out now, um, it would be very difficult to find uh, a husband because the Asian community would see my gayness as a very negative side of the family. I think once my sisters are married, um, I will tell my mother that I am gay and probably leave home as well and hopefully set up a relationship. But my ideal um, partner would be a nation person because he would be able to understand more all the difficulties that you know, a nation person faces. Because even though I would be living on my own, you know, I would still be very close to my family, um, visiting them and things like that. I, I wouldn't want to cut off ties completely. Do you think they would accept? I don't think they, they would accept it or would be too happy about it. They don't see it as a way of life. Like in India, two men don't sort of set up house together and live openly and, you know, say they're glad to be gay. Is that what you'd like to do, ideally? Yes, ideally, I would like to do that. But I think my family is more important than my sexuality at the moment. Can you tell me how often you find advertisements on television uh, informative about the products? How often do you find advertisements? Not very often. Someone else with different family problems is this freelance market researcher. His family are Muslims and came here from Kenya 18 years ago, though they originate from Pakistan. He's the eldest of five children. Uh, more often than not. After I finished college about um, four or five years ago, my parents were trying to arrange a marriage for me. I knew the girl from college. I'd have thought, well, it'd be easy to get married to someone that I knew. But um, her parents didn't agree with it because the two families didn't know each other and they'd already decided that they had someone else for her. So how did that affect you? I was quite relieved by it all, that I didn't have to go through, you know, I didn't have to deceive anyone, especially someone that I, was very close to me. And what action did you take after that? After that, I realised that I had to do something about uh, my gayness, and so I contacted a befriending, a befriending group in London called Icebreakers, and uh, it was through them that I actually, you know, acknowledged the fact that I was gay. I haven't told my parents. I, I couldn't tell my parents, not yet, anyway. Not until I've resolved how I'm going to, you know, carry on, or how, how I can actually cope with being gay and staying within the family, because that's one thing that's really important to me. Are they very strict with you? Yes, they're strict with all of us. I mean, because I'm the eldest, I'm, I couldn't go out because that would mean that my brothers would be allowed to go out and my father didn't want that so it meant that either I, you know, if I was going to stay at home I had to live under their rule, you know. So I decided that I'd move out gradually. I started staying with friends, staying away uh, a few days at a time and saying that I had work because I, tra I travel all around London doing work. There was a point when I, had, I moved back home because my father was very ill and they were saying it was because of me through worry, so I decided to go back home. But then again, once he got better, um, we went, you know, he went back through the old routine of complaining about me staying out, so I decided that I didn't want to, I couldn't stay at home. Why was he so worried about you, given that he doesn't know you're gay? Well, you can't have a bachelor son st staying outside. I mean, he might be going out with women, so, I mean, it's like you can't, 
I might want to get married, you see, through my own free, free will. How have your problems at home affected your relationships outside? My first relationship, I used to go home at the weekends um, and I couldn't sort of take, uh, take him home with me. So that meant, that, you know, I had to sort of say, well, I'm going home. And he'd say, well, what for? And I'd say, well, you know, I'm expected to go home. I can't stay away sort of the whole weekend. And that ended up sort of, it came to a point where I had to choose, you know. He said, well, you either carry on with the relationship or see your family, so. What was the we, result? Well, the result was that I finished the relationship. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't handle, like, my family situation and, and the relationship. What are you hoping in the long term to be able to do? I really don't know, apart from sort of just making a standpoint that I don't want to get married, that I don't, you know, that I don't see myself getting married at all. Apart from that, I don't really see, you know, any other problems. And saying that, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really live within the close family unit. Isaac's family came here from St Lucia in the mid-1950s. He's the eldest of three children and is a second-year film student. I was born here, so I've lived in Bow my life. I had quite a lot of friends around me who were, like, also kind of grew up to be gay. And we were just, like, always friendly at school. But I used to, like, fight against it when I was young. I used to say that I was bisexual when I was about 15. And then I had a friend called Jay who said, look, Isaac, you know you're gay. And, like... And then I came to terms of it as well when I started going out with other men. Yeah. Do you think it might be a phase? Um, no, I think that's... Um, How can you be certain? Because I know, I mean, like, I'm gay, and I mean, I think that's all there is to it. I think a phase where you're going through is the term my mother, like, you know, wanted to cling on to in a way. Because she... Because, like, when I came out to her, she said, um... You know, well, we thought so, but we didn't say nothing. We thought you might grow out of it, but um, you haven't. <laughs> and so, you know, it's that, you know, and she's... Did it come liberal. as a great shock to her to find that her own son was gay, though? Oh, yes, I think so. I mean, she still says, like, she prefer me to be straight, but then um, she has accepted me. Well, I think kind of, like, people, like, come up to her sometimes and, like, you know, parts of the community and say to her, oh, your son and everything, you know, is he not dating yet? And she just comes out really straightforward and tells them, you know, and says, like, oh, look, I'm proud of him and everything, and I think, like, he's doing quite well. She takes me for me and stands up for me as well. What about your father? Um... Well, I don't know, I think kind of like I'm an embarrassment to my father, really, because I don't fit into, like, all the macho kind of terms which are given out and that kind of bonding between the father and son, you know. And so I don't think he's really accepted me being gay because he doesn't like the way I dress and things like that. He says, why can't you just... Why do you have to make it a statement in your dress about being gay. And I keep saying, I don't dress like this. Everybody in the West don't dress like this, just because you stay in the East End and everything. And um, I didn't agree with all the kind of, like, macho things to do with, like, women's places in the kitchen and things like that. What about brothers and sisters? They know I'm gay as well. I think sometimes kind of kids in the, on the estate said, oh, your brother's a puff, isn't he? And they've said, well, yeah, so what, you know? And, like, so they're quite supportive as well. I mean, most of the people that I've, men I've gone out with have been white. And, I mean, be it to do with the conditioning, I mean, from the age of two, you know, Janet and John, there's white, you know, are white, and, like, everything else around you is white. There's not... You can't identify, there's no identification, you know, so... I think even right up to like now and being here at college, um, I felt as if I had to like join the black gay group in a way to find um, an identification that I thought had been lost, I suppose. How do you see your relationships going? Um, well, I can't think, I can't say how I see my relationships going. I mean, I've, I've got like two 
at the moment. I mean, I don't think they follow the pattern of kind of heterosexual relationships, and I don't think I want them to either. How long have you both known one another? Well, we met about six years ago when we were both students. I was in London and Alan was in Southampton. Uh, it was at a student conference up in Manchester uh, that we were both delegates to a gay conference and we met at the social in the evening. I suppose our eyes met over the bar. And we've been living together now for three, years, so. yeah, three, three and a half years. Alan, I think you've met Ahmed's parents, haven't you? Yeah, I met them fairly early on. Um, it was quite awkward at first. It was unusual for them to have someone outside the family in the house. And I think there was also some difficulty in them understanding me. Uh, because of his accent more than anything else. Yes. Yeah. Um, about three years ago, I went to India for a while and Alan came over and he visited my family there and we went round India. So he got to know the family there and that sort of strengthened his relationship with my parents. And they already knew that um, I was gay before I met Alan. Um, so, no, there was no problem there. That's right. And it was probably a lot less awkward um, with my parents because they were used to me bringing friends home. They, my mother had known that I was gay for a couple of years and after some initial awkwardness had accepted it. And Ahmed is accepted as part, part of the, the family rather in the same way that uh, my brother's wives were accepted. Um, I'm not sure it's something I'm awfully happy about. It sort of gives uh, a heterosexual um, view of the relationship, which I, do, I don't think necessarily applies, but it's, it's one way that my family can, can accept my gayness. How's your relationship been affected by Arma's involvement with the gay black group? Well, I was initially jealous of the group at first because it was something that I couldn't participate in. Um, but it's, I think, I think it's um, made our relationship a lot better. Um, I've, I've got um, a far greater understanding now of what it means to be black and what it means to be black and gay. I think our relationship when it first started was very much along white lines and I was almost blind to the fact that Ahmed was black, but I've now realised just um, what being black means to him. Previously, I sort of mainly concentrated on my sexuality, the fact that I was gay, but uh, with the help of the group, I could actually explore what it meant to be black. And I think um, that's, in fact, strengthened our relationship mm. because I could actually come back to it with a fresh perspective. When I joined the group, I mean, I've got quite a few like white gay friends, and even the most kind of like liberal were surprisingly kind of reactionary. And so being in the group has made me more aware of kind of racism and how subtle it is, and you know, its extremes and that. As Isaac said, when he mentions the group, the gay black group, and some of his friends say, "What aren't aren't they rather extremist or so?" Um, I would point out. I mean that is a fairly typical reaction, as we are expected to normalise and, and sort of be heterosexual and sort of wash away parts of our identity. So um, among whites, are we expected to sort of bleach out our black c culture? Uh, this group reasserts that culture in a positive way. That's right. The most important aspect of this group, unlike within the white gay movement, unlike within the black movement, when somebody in this group looks at you and says, I know, you know they understand. It's worth remembering that these are just some of the views and attitudes of gay black people. It's a sad reflection on our society that many felt unable to share their experiences with us for fear of possible repercussions on either their family or professional lives. Only through our willingness to listen to their views and feelings can a better understanding be reached and hopefully a more tolerant society.